Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Klein, still not affiliated with the College Board. And we're continuing to discuss the linear regression model, simple linear regression, and we're going to talk today about regression inference. Okay, so if we have a graph with a, a y variable and an x variable, and we have some points, and we have a line, we, we have a slope, b. Remember, we write the equation for the line y hat equals a plus bx. And what, we, what we're trying to do now is assess the statistical significance of the b. And that is related to this issue of how closely the dots fit the line. If the dots are very far from the line, even if it's a steep slope, <coughs> it may not be statistically significant. On the other hand, if the dots all lie close to the line, even if it's a very shallow slope, it could be statistically significant. That is, we um, have confidence that the difference from zero is not due to chance. This is if we've got all our assumptions lined up, which is a, another issue which I'll get into at some point. Okay, so what we do is we measure the statistical significance of B. And we start out that starts out by taking the ratio of b to the standard error of b. Standard error of b. I guess I'll write it like this. I'm not sure what the typical notation is for that. Okay, so the, the formula for the standard error of b is equal to, I think, it's the square root of s squared e, which is the sum of the squared values of these residuals, which makes sense. We're trying to measure how far the dots are from the line. So when these dots are really far from the line, this will be large. But we scale it by s squared of x. So um, if we have a relatively narrow variation of x and a huge variation in the uh, in the error terms, in the uh, residuals, then we get a, uh, a very high standard error of B. So the standard error of B is high when the uh, squared, squared residuals are high relative to the variation in our explanatory variable. Okay, so the important thing is that it, and that's just a way of measuring how far these the points are from the line. Okay, this ratio of the coefficient to the standard error, it will have a t distribution. And so a <coughs> p-value, oh, it will have a t-distribution, by the way, with, in this case, n minus 2 degrees of freedom, where n is the number of data points or observations. I'll refer to this as the number of observations, usually, but it's the number of, number of points on the graph. So if you have... Um, a lot of data points, then you have more degrees of freedom. If you have fewer, then you have fewer degrees of freedom. Okay, so the p-value comes from taking tcdf from the t-value that we calculate here, that is the ratio of b to the standard error is called the t-value, to some big number, we can put 100, uh, with the number of degrees of freedom, so n minus 2. Of course, <laughs> we're never going to actually <coughs> do this kind of calculation, or rarely, because typically this will come from a computer printout, but I wanted to show that in the background. And so when we get a low p-value, that will be because the points 
are what close to or far from the line because the points are close to the line and we conclude that B is significantly significantly hold on different from zero. So significantly whoops drop my pencil here, drop my chalk. Significantly different from zero. Conversely, if we get a high p value, we conclude that b is not significantly different from zero. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can calculate a confidence interval. Confidence interval for B. And that's equal to <coughs> um, B plus or minus a margin of error. And the margin of error depends on the confidence level and on uh, the standard error. So the margin of error is equal to T star times the standard error of B. <coughs> and T star um, comes from the confidence level. Depends on the confidence level and the degrees of freedom. So we would look up in the table, uh, in a t-table, <coughs> where the confidence level, what the confidence level would imply for the degrees of freedom. So for example, suppose we hit, we're, we're looking for a 90 percent confidence interval and we had 27 observations 27 data points, 27 observations. So the degrees of freedom would be 27 minus 2 is 25. So now we go to a T table, and I'll borrow one from somebody on the internet here, and we'll look for 25 degrees of freedom and a 90% confidence interval. Here's 90%, 25, and so we would get a T star of 1.708. So we would write down our T star is equal to 1.708, and then if uh, <coughs> then we would just multiply that by whatever the standard error of our coefficient was. So let's say if our coefficient was, if b is 3 and our standard error of b was 1 point, well let's just make it 1.0, then the margin of error would be 1.708 times 1.0 equals 1.708 and so <coughs> in that case the confidence interval would be 3 plus or minus 1.708 and that's it for regression inference